If you have your Bibles, please turn to Malachi chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 5 and 6 in chapter 4 in Malachi. Verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he, and shall, he shall turn, turn the hearts, hearts of, of the fathers, fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. fathers Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now turn, if you will, to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Are you there? Verse 1. We're going to read through verse 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And, and ye fathers, provoke, provoke not, not your children, children to wrath, wrath but, but bring them up in the nurture and, and admonition of the, of the Lord. Lord. One last scripture is found in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, two verses, verses 20 and 21. Verse 20 said, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Now let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the word of God that is coming forth. Thank you for the music, the worship. <clears throat> Thank you for the divine presence of God that means more to us than anything. We thank you, Father, for the people of God. And now, Lord God, we ask that you would bless us. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for everything. Let it bring further glory to your cause in Jesus' holy name. Thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Before I go into the word, uh, just a few um, statements of thanks to the Lord. I found out um, after I got married to um, Pastor Wanda that God had her praying for me for years for integrity. They really blessed me. You know, you don't know who's praying for you. You don't know why you're being kept, but it's not your prayers. And that really blessed me. And, um, I was thanking the Lord as I was sitting there for so many things. And um, I was thanking the Lord for this group and some of those that have gone on before us. I was said it's, uh, it's uh, some of the finest people in the world are right here um, in our midst. <laughs> I really believe that. Lord has given me a wonderful privilege and um, at first I didn't understand it but now I'm understanding it better. There are people that are gifted and smart in this world, valedictorians, salutatorians and just A students come through here that are go places in the Lord as they submit to the Lord and have gone places 
Then there are those that are so committed and, and walk in integrity. These things are blessings. These things are blessings. And I am I was just thanking the Lord. Um, you know, we don't have a church that's so running over with so many people and so large, thousands of people. But then God never used thousands of people to carry out his plan. Not once in the Bible can you find it. And that's not to say that he's not using, but I'm just saying, on my part, I am grateful for what he's doing. And uh, as I said, there are a lot of gifted people here, and I appreciate um, God sending and giving us this wonderful privilege of shepherding. I listened to Rose, Minister Rose, and she has just a wonderful way of articulating she was all in this message. I said, God, just, it was just so good. I, I, I was blessed, just blessed by um, that. I want you to know, Rose, that uh, God's going to really use you even more. you be encouraged. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So many, so many blessings. And I won't get into calling and just lifting up others here, but I, that was on my heart. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. But listen to what she was saying. There's an open door, but you have to choose to go through it. That's so real and so true. God prepares the table before us. No, and, and I, you know, we had this horse, you know, where we lived on the farm. You heard, you, some of you know where I'm going with this. And this particular horse, I would take him out of the stall and bring him to the water, pump the water in the trough so he could drink. And he would sit there and drink about just a little tiny bit and he'd lift his head back. Go back and forth and, and I'm trying to get him to drink. But he didn't want it. And finally, I took him back to a stall. There's an old saying, you can lead a horse to the water. But you sure can't make him drink. Isn't that right? <laughs> Look at somebody say, I'm not going to be like the horse today. <laughs> God is terribly good. He is just so good. The longer I live, the more I understand a little bit better. That he's been good all along. Hallelujah. So I hope that you will join in and do as Rose and several others have done. Listen with your spiritual ears. And hear what the Lord is saying. Again, the theme is children who are angry with their fathers. This is what God told me that he wanted me to do theme preaching, just several messages or sermons on this subject. I was sitting in a chair and all of a sudden it just boom. He said, children who are angry with their fathers. And it, I just was taken back momentarily. And then he began to let me know. That's what I want you to talk about. So this is the third message, I believe, concerning this particular theme. Children who are angry with their fathers. Now, when we say children, we're not talking about the little toddlers and the little uh, early teens. We're talking adults that's 60, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever, 40, 30 <laughs> 
but who were children at one time and could have been abused or hurt by their fathers. And it was so real how uh, Rose made known that that void was there. And no matter what else she had going for her, part of that foundation needed repair. But thank God that she allowed him to do it. Amen. One of the things that I've understood fairly well is when God gives a message, there is a need. And um, so just continue to be open. Don't say I'm over that if you're not. Just say, Lord, like Ezekiel did when God said, Son of man, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you know. If you'll say that, you'll always give him the right away. Isn't that right? Children who are angry with their fathers. We talked about the first message. We just gave an overview as to the different types of fathers that can cause abuse. And, and then we, um, last, the first time we talked about the children or the fathers who are, have abused their children, whether physically, sexually, emotionally, whatever. And we talked about on last Yeah. Today we'll be talking about children or fathers who abused the children's mother. Fathers who abused the children's mothers or abused their spouses and the effects that it has on the children. The different fathers, we did talk about the different, excuse me, um, type of fathers. I want to kind of briefly go through that again. If I can find that list there. Rather than to keep fumbling, because I did have it there. But to fathers, fathers that abuse their children, fathers that abuse the children's mothers, fathers that abandon, fathers that are too strict, fathers that break their promises. And there's a couple others I don't have before me. I'd have them written down. Fathers that are too passive, yes, and there's one other. Yes, fathers that don't provide for their children. So all of these categories is what the Holy Spirit gave me. And all of these different type fathers affect their children, whether male or female, it affects them. And it can give them some very difficult problems in life. Sometimes there are relationship problems. Sometimes there's trust issues. Sometimes there's bitter root judgments where they end up doing the same thing to their children. There are cycles. It can cause health problems in the children. It can make people angry and bitter. Just a number of things it can do. But God Jesus came to free us up from the pain and the hurts and the bruises that sin can bring. So we are going to talk a little further. We talked about the types of abuses and 
physical, sexual, verbal, or emotional abuse. Sometimes the fathers may uh, would not look upon their behavior as I've been abusive because they didn't physically do anything, but they brought pain still to their children. They put them down. They cursed them with their words. They spoke to them and said, you'll never amount to anything. Those are curses that they put upon their children. And uh, so the list goes on. There's fightings in the home. <clears throat> so today, we will talk about fathers that abuse their spouses or the children's mom. Excuse me. I'm so glad that Jesus cares for us enough to bring light. I was grateful for the moving of the Holy Spirit when we first came. I heard the Lord as I lay on my bed this morning says, I'm going to frustrate the plan of Satan. Hallelujah. And when we came in here and the glory was here, even in the room back there, I said, okay. And uh, one of the things that I'm so uh, blessed by is we just have to wait on the Lord. But once he moves, yes. Satan is no problem. Yes. Hallelujah. God can certainly deal with him. So we are just grateful for his moves. All right, let's talk a little about the abuse of uh, spouses or the children's moms, the effects of it. Some of the effects, generally speaking, and I may, I'm not going to go into detail about that, can be depression or anger, low self-esteem, physical problems, faulty concepts about life, distortions about God, trust issues. And the list can just sort of get long. And normally you find people that are really truly seeking God for their spiritual well-being, trying to overcome certain things. Then this, these messages are going to speak directly to a lot of these issues. Because the most influential people in any child's life is their fathers and mothers. It has been reported that no other person on earth can have the impact that fathers and mothers have. So fathers have a very significant role. Many, many fathers, some incarcerated, some out there strung out on drugs, some of them there that just don't understand. They were never taught or modeled. Their fathers left them because they didn't understand, because their fathers did the same things to them. It is a blessing when God interjects and causes a father that has had that to happen to do differently. It's God's plan and it starts with salvation. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. God always want to do us good. And so if you're a father and you're listening to me by way of television, I, I've got some good news for you. You don't have to beat yourself down any longer. You can uh, turn your life over to Jesus Christ. And if you turn your life over to Jesus Christ and said, Father, I haven't been a good father. I wasn't really taught. I had no model. And I did what I saw others do. But, but God, I'm hearing the more excellent way. 
And I want to turn my life over to you and I want you to help me to become the father that I need to be. And if you have children that you've neglected, fathers, get up, go back. Look them up and get in their lives. This is good and wholesome in the sight of God. You may feel like they don't want me. You may be guilt ridden. But I'm telling you, you need to go back. You belong and they belong. Many times they suffer from identities crisis because they don't know what you were like. All they did was seen pictures or heard you. But if you will go back and be real to them and repent first to God and then to them and tell them I want to be in your life. I know you probably don't trust me and all of these things, but, but if you'll just work with me and over time I'll show you that I'm a changed person. I want to do it differently. Society needs this. Society needs this. Hallelujah. Societies need this. There are too many children that are crying out for fathers that have never been there. And God said before that great and notable day come, I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Yeah. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. What a great God. And I pray as far as this word can reach on the out periphery of North Carolina and uh, different parts of uh, Williamsburg and uh, wherever it stretches here in the Hampton Roads Tidewater area, I want to sound what he's saying to me. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up, nurture, educate them, train them, be a model, be an example, a positive role model for them. They are your seed. They are your offspring. And hallelujah, you'll be responsible when you stand before God. Go back, fathers. Make it right. And God will bless you. Amen. God is a great God. Fathers, you have a grave responsibility. Fathers that abuse the children's mothers. Sometimes there's physical abuse. Sometimes the fathers, the pattern that they've seen, they feel like they can beat a spouse, dominate, dominate be domineering, and make them behave as though they're children. My precious father, I love him. He said to me, and I was right at 20 years old. He said, I want to tell you something. He said, you get married, don't you be hitting on your wife. He said, they're grown just like you. And he said, and you can't raise them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I thank God for such a model. I thank God for such a model. He's, I've never seen him lift a hand at my mother in a negative way. Never. Never threaten her life. Not one time. And I got some further news. He straightened us out. If we raised our boys or acted wrong toward our mother, all he had to do he would look at you and he said, boy, that's your mother. And he would cut it right out. And he had four sons, but not a one of them disputed what he did. I had a good model and I'm giving him the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he taught us. We saw the model. And so we didn't have any problem thinking about whipping on somebody because it wasn't in our DNA they're grown and you cannot raise them you must work with them and love them isn't that right 
Amen. All right. So, but there are fathers that physically abuse, fathers that literally fight them, fathers that throws, they throw tantrums like a little kid. There are fathers that do that. They throw, throw objects. They throw furniture. They throw food. They, they, they do childish things. But I want you to know it hurts the child. It terrifies them. It makes them afraid. And it doesn't make them secure at all. People all over the world have experienced such things. But when we come to Jesus, he says, I want to repair. I want to mend the broken places. Is that all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Fathers that dominate what I say go. They won't let the wife say nothing. like what someone said to me. <laughs> they used to use this phrase. <laughs> I'm the captain of this ship. <laughs> and she would respond, that's why it's sinking. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My God, God is good. <laughs> Must say that if you're gonna be the captain of this ship, you better make sure it's not sinking, isn't that right? <laughs> God is good. He's a great savior, but they they are those fathers that, as I said, they didn't know any better. So they couldn't do any better. They're those that emotionally abuse their children, abuse their wives, they put them down. And the children hear those words. The children hear that. And it's affecting them. It's affecting them. They may never tell, but it affects them. Because they're supposed to be the role models. Oh, I've done some, I've done some things that I don't, I'm not proud of. But I can't, couldn't camp there. You hear what I'm saying? I couldn't camp there. And the thing that I like about God is he's going to always check me. I remember one time I was about to say something to my older daughter based on what I seen. And as clear as a bell, the Lord says, is that the way I treat you? I said, no, but. And he started teaching me. And all I had was some of the things that I would see done. And I would sometimes do a little threats. And God would always say, is that the way I treat you? And I stopped saying no, but. And I began to try to line up with what God was like. I owe him praise, saints. I owe him glory. I owe God the praise. He's been my teacher and my father's imparted a lot of wonderful things. But when I got grown and on my own, God began to teach me other things that were so important because I had three daughters. Now I got four, two sons. I got a nice family. Thank you, the Lord. I'm excited about it, you know. But he's a great God. He's been good in uh, I am by no means looking down because I would, he's taught me better than that. Looking down on any father that is listening to this word because I know beyond a doubt except for the grace of God. There go I. I know that. But it's an opportunity for God to bring healing. And that's what he's saying. I want to reach out to bring healing to those whose fathers abused their moms and they had to see that week in and week out, week out, year in and year out. They had to witness that, that trauma and it brought fear and pain, 
anguish to the soul. And I'm so glad that we have a Savior now. Now, as we're talking now, if the Holy Spirit takes you somewhere, then let him have his way. Isn't that right? Don't fight and say, ah, no, 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 I ain't. Just, just let him have his way. This is not about us. It's about God and his Holy Spirit wanting to bring wholeness to us. So, um, the wives are the weaker vessels. And the Bible tells us, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Isn't that right? Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That he may present it a church without spot or wrinkle. So it takes Christ consistently loving the church in order for the church to reach its potential. It takes the husband loving their wives and giving them a chance to blossom and reach their potential. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Amen. Fathers, we must love our spouses and not try to play off their emotions and, you know, want to domineer or dominate that spirit. God breaks that spirit, isn't that right? Because God doesn't treat us that way. Now, there's some long-term and short-term effects on a father's children that witness constant abuse of their mothers. I remember there's a young person, and this young person, his stepfather came in the picture. His father wasn't in his life. But his stepfather was in the picture from his childhood. And he was abusive. He was an alcoholic and abusive. And he continued to abuse and fight the child's mom. And he watched that and he would cry for years. But one day he became a teenager. And he couldn't take it anymore. He got the gun. And he told him, if you hit her again, I'm going to shoot you. His stepfather turned on him because he was full of alcohol. And he was coming toward him. He said, I'm warning you. You better stop or I'm going to shoot. And he began to cry. But his stepfather, full of alcohol, continued toward him like he was going to tear him apart. And he shot him. He ran for his life afterward. But I'm saying that to say that when a son gets old enough, if he has to witness that, sooner or later he's going to step in. He's not going to watch his mother constantly beat like that. It's in him. God put it in him. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Fathers, fathers that are listening to me, do what's right. And God will bless you. Some of the long and short term effects, I won't divide them. Security issues. Anxiety is stressful. I had someone some time ago to tell me, I don't know where this constant worry is. I don't know where it's coming from. I, I don't understand it. But it traced back 
to their father's rejection. Security issues. Negative images it produces. And those images, a person, unless or until they get that truth in their hearts, they will function based on the negative images. Images are so powerful. They are there and that's what people see. That's what they see is the images and they operate based on those images. Many times people can't get ahead and they just can't figure out why. And I remember praying for someone some time ago and God said, it's the images. Like a giant computer, like a DVD player, you place the DVD in and it can only show and speak or sound what's on that DVD. Isn't that right? That's the way images are. If the images don't change, they will continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. That's why God says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Images are very powerful. Then, but fathers abusing their spouses or the children's mothers produces negative images. And it breeds anger, he said, and resentment. And it can be subtle, but it still breeds anger and resentment because there's something wrong with that picture. Isn't that right? And even a child knows that there's something wrong with this. There's something wrong with it. It ain't right to see this happening like that. They know it. They can be young, but they know there's something wrong with it. And those things are forming. And many times they grow up to adulthood. They become adults, right? They get out in society. So on, but those images are still there. Causing them problems. But. God comes to help us. And if he helps us, then we, are, we, we do differently. So it causes negative images, anger, and resentment it causes. And it causes outlooks, an unhealthy negative outlook concerning life, which causes one to make as you heard earlier, wrong decisions based on the wrong information. And that wrong information is constantly being made wrong information because of the negative images, because of the, the ideas and the concepts that were formed as a result of looking at this abuse. For example, a child may say, well, I am not getting married because ain't no man going to do that to me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Am I making it real? Or they may say when they get married, they still may say, ain't no man going to beat on me. If he does, I'm going to do thus and so. Y'all ever heard that? No, nah, I know I'm, 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 I'm talking truth, y'all. Now, don't, don't act like you've been sanctified all your life. Mama said, ain't no man going to do this to me, brother. So she goes and get highly educated and maybe she might become a lawyer. <laughs> Y'all got to hear what I'm trying to tell you. And so even Jesus can come and start saying, well, you know, you need to do it differently. 
So Jesus is gentle because he knows why you do what you do. He doesn't scold you. He doesn't put you down because he knows why you do what you do. But he said, I want to go to the root cause. He said, I understand you. Say, your spouse may not understand you. He said, but I understand you. I know you're still responding to that father who did your, your mother wrong. I, I, I understand that. So I understand and I want to heal that hurt. I want to heal that hurt. Boy, you've you got to love Jesus. I mean, you've got to love Jesus. He's good when you see that. So it causes people to form concepts and attitudes that are unhealthy and they could be a distortion to life. And then it causes repeated pattern. Patterns, uh, a, a, a male a child may grow up and because of the image he may end up doing the same thing to his wife. And I said a female may either not marry or they may just, when they get married, they're not going to submit. And the Lord said to me that it's, it's just with the fathers that causes people, women not to want to submit to their husbands. Don't y'all throw nothing up here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. To, I, I'm just sharing what he said. I just. Should I duck? <laughs> he causes repeated patterns and trust issues. Just don't trust them. Just don't trust a man, you know. Sons. One person told of a young man, he was in another country. And this young boy, he was so dejected and de depressed. I don't want to call his name because I'm on TV. But he was in another land, another place. And, it, and he saw this young man, he was so depressed. Sitting alone by himself. And he walked up to him. He felt the Lord drawing him. He walked up there to him and he said, son, how you doing? What are you, what are you doing out here all by yourself? Huh? So he just murmured a few things and the Lord revealed to him. No, he said, well, you know, he was trying to get him to lift his head up. And he said, well, my, my old man said, I, I'm never going to amount to anything. And he looked right at me. He said, you know something? He said, your old man's a liar. And so he looked up at him. He said, he is? He said, he's a liar. There's so many people whose head are down because of the past. And God want to lift up their heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then it can cause unforgiveness. You all know about that, right? It can cause unforgiveness, cause those things to happen. And I, I, there's a situation where I remember there's a man that even before I gotten into the ministry, he would have an argument with his wife and he would stay angry with her and would not speak to her in the same house for weeks at the time. Why well, you say, man, what was wrong with that man? He had unforgiveness at the root. And when unforgiveness is at the root, it makes, a, it, makes it hard for a person to be willing to forgive. I remember that. I was a teenager. And, uh, I, and I used to say, how can a man... How can he be married and stay in the, in the house with his wife and not even speak to her for weeks? That's a bad case. But anyway, the whole thing is just, that does happen. But unforgiveness is at the root. And God has to heal from unforgiveness. There's 
effects of this anger in the child. Somebody said, well, okay, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm not so bad. I, I, you know, I do have a few little issues with my dad, but I'm not so bad. You know, you, you're talking about some strange cases here. The long-term effects of anger. It can cause migraines or headaches, hypertension, high blood pressure. It can cause abusive speech. And if you're a spiritual person, it can sabotage your spiritual destinies. And that's what I ain't talking about. Well, unforgiveness is one of those things that can sabotage you altogether. So headaches, uh, and I got this from a website, this part, called betterhelp.vic.gov. Dot all. And it says these are some effects of anger, long term anger when a person's been angry for a while. Headaches, digestive problems such as abdominal pain, stomach pain, insomnia, lack of sleep. Increased anxieties, depression, which deals with anger, skin problems, such as eczema, heart attack, all these it was mentioning. So you see, God is not just exposing and picking on us. God wants us to remain in health. Isn't that right? He, he knows. He knows because the body is not designed to breed, to, to hold on to the anger. It stirs, it's, it's an emotion, but it has energy with it. But it's negative energy. And let me give you an example. Uh, we are made in such a way that if something happens to us where we panic right away, uh, the adrenaline will flow at a rapid rate. It's almost like a machine put in high gear. The body is made like that. And you can do things that you normally couldn't do when you were at normal. For example, I, I shared this. I had a brother, me and my brother, we were in this hog pen <laughs> years ago. And he was smaller than I was and the, hog, the fence was about it. It was tall, so you had to really climb over the fence. And so we were out there kind of teasing this hog, this sow. And all of a sudden, somehow that sow actually kind of charged after us. Boy, my little brother. He ran, and to this day, I don't know how he jumped over that fence. God's made us so that there's, it's like a built-in system where all of a sudden blood rushes uh, uh, so quickly and it gives your body a boost so that you can do supernatural things. You ever seen people when they get in a hurry, they, they don't, they, one time the, the story is told about a man that saw a person under the car and he lifted the car, they can't today figure out how it happened. The adrenaline. God builds us. He's built us and so on. But now what are you saying all that? I'm saying all this to say this. Negative energies can do some damage. It's one thing for the adrenaline to, re, re, to release that and so you can get that done and you calm down after a while and it won't cause any harm. But anger over a long period of time is like negative energy inwardly and over a period of time it brings about an effect. God made us to release. He said, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So that's why we, he wants us to get rid of the anger and allow God to help us. Now, the body has many systems. One said it has 10 main or 11 main systems. It, it, the body, we're made so beautiful, okay? Digestive system, the skeletal, the muscular, the nervous, uh, endocrine, the cardiovascular, 
respiratory, urinary. It just is this reproductive system. It goes on. We got a lot of system now. Let me give you this, two or three things, and I'm about done here. Uh, let's take the digestive system to purpose. Uh, it functions and it works to bring the physical and the chemical breakdown of food to allow absorption of nutrients, okay? This is the digestive system when it's working and functioning properly, all right? The physical and chemical breakdown of food to allow absorption of nutrients. Now, if this digestive system is not working properly, then it's not going to properly break down the food, okay? And the body's not going to get the proper nutrients because the digestive system is being tampered with because of long-term anger. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. The cardiovascular deals with heart. Circulation of blood which transport gases, nutrients, and hormones, and waste. That system must be functioning, because if it's not functioning properly, it's going to cause some problem. Y'all getting the picture? Okay, the nervous system is processing center of sensory input, the nervous system, right? When these systems get tampered with because of the negative energies over a period of time, it causes disruption, and this system is going to cause some problem in our physical bodies. So God is not just picking on us. He wants to help us. He wants to help us. In conclusion, I'm saying, we have to get rid of anger before it gets rid of us. God is good. Fathers have done a lot of damage. But all is not lost. Hallelujah. As long as there is Jesus. There is hope. Isn't that right? There is hope in Jesus. And Jesus can do more in a minute's time. Than physicians working for you year after year. Jesus can change a life so fast and he specializes in things that are impossible what's impossible with man is possible with the most high God God saints is here to help us and bringing this to a conclusion now the father's you may be a victim of such, but don't fear. Don't be upset with yourself. Don't be angry with your father. Just come. Let the Lord minister to you. Because whatever he does, he does well. God is our refuge and strength, somebody. He's a very present help in a time of need. David says, in a time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. God. You heard it earlier. When my father and my mother forsake me. Then the Lord will take me up. He that has begun a good work in you. Shall perform it. To the day of Christ. If God be for you. Who can be against you. Hey somebody. Let's thank him right now. For what he's planned to do. God. I heard him say to me, basically, he said, my word is going to bring light. And he said, just like light turned on in a dark room causes the darkness to flee, the light of my word, the light of my truth is going to bring light again. Hallelujah. God is good. I'm excited about it. He came that we might be healed. He came to heal the broken hearts, the, the battered, the bruised, the oppressed. Jesus came. Ah, yes, he came. He came, not man, Jesus came to give us life. Hallelujah. And he's right here in the midst waiting for an opportunity. Hallelujah. For the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. I've given your word that you've given me. Forgive us for every abuse. Forgive, Lord God, where uh, the fathers have uh, overstepped their boundaries. Oh God, and brought abuse to the spouses and caused pain to the children. And now, Lord God, we need you to transcend time and go and minister to emotions and minister to uh, dark images and minister, Lord, to, to wrong concepts, to minister to us now, to make us whole. You've forgiven us for all trespasses and all transgressions, Lord. And now, Lord God, move by your Spirit. Move by your Holy Spirit to make us whole. To make us whole. I thank you, Father. I give your name to glory. I give your name to honor. While our heads are bowed and while our eyes are closed, I want you to just let's tap into the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, have your way. Do that which nobody can do but you. Heal our hearts again. Make us whole. We're giving you the glory. for our television audience and then we're going to pray for the body Father in Jesus name we pray for our television audience now that you would minister to the children of the fathers that abused their mothers take the anger take the pain take the hurt Take the fears, the bitterness from the hearts. Oh, glory. Mm. Oh, glory to God. And let them be embraced by a love that they cannot explain. A love that comes from Jesus. Because you died that we might have life. You rose again that we might be justified. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Oh, yes. Release that man, that woman. Release that son, that daughter. Holy Spirit, heal them now. They've heard you and they've understood now where the root of many of their difficulties and issues came. And they're ready to release it. Meet them now at the point of their need. Pray, Lord, let them go through that door that you open now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to give you praise. Come on, let's give God thanks.